Oh, there's some tough players on this final. Uh, Paul King, uh, he can do some damage. At it, Bradley. You know, I've been tangling him with, with him. You know, he's followed me around the card room. He's cracked me aces. He, you know, he's he's a real thorn. And so if I can knock him out, I'll be happy. You know, I'm, a, uh, uh, I'm not bothered about the eight thousand quid seat, and I just want to get rid of Bradley. That's my, that's my game plan. <laughs> Fantastic. You've got a, a couple of amateur players uh, like Jason Jones, who's who's on there, who's won the Welsh Amateur title, and uh, Neil Blashley, who's won a, a gala poker tour event this year. I mean, what do you think chance do these guys have in this final? Oh, they've got an excellent chance and a, and a proven track record. And if they've made the way through this field to the final table, yeah, you know, you know they're no mugs. And uh, I'm sure they're pretty solid. And they've got nothing to lose now. They're, they're going to go for it, you know. And uh, I, I don't think that we're going to get an easy ride from them. So uh, I don't think it's an easy final at all. But it's it's going to be fun, and I'm looking forward to it. It's just nice. Uh, to be. I've got a couple of rounds, but I mean, no one's really ahead of the game. I've got a. To be honest, I've got a pretty easy player in my small blind. He's a uh, blue dog, I think he's called online or something like that. I think blue dog, yes, blue dog, yeah. He's, he's. I mean, he's pretty good, but uh, easy, really. I mean, I, 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 I managed to get all his chips in. He got his aces, but I busted his aces yesterday. You know, I don't know how I did it, to be honest, really. That would have been with uh, two sevens on the, uh, the f one on the flop, one on the turn, I believe. Yeah, skill and guile. I managed to get the <laughs> chips in with. <laughs> no, now, our card room manager here at Luton, um, your staff seemed to do a really good job yesterday. How did they find the uh, the tournament? They found it very enjoyable. Uh, a lot of good players playing nicely. Good little bounces along the way. Yeah, kept going well. It, I mean, there's no question. You've got one of the finest card rooms in the country here at Luton. Typically, what sort of schedule do you do you run? Uh, we run satellites, at individual competitions, um, hundred pound tournaments. It's, it's good banter all the way. And tell me, do you ever receive any stick from your staff? No, there's a good banter between the staff and us, but I like to give as much as I take. How do you find the general standard of play yesterday? I mean, a lot of pros here, as opposed to our normal events, which are sort of all amateur. I mean, how did you find that sort of atmosphere to play in? Great. The air patterns have got nothing to fear. I mean, our, I think the standard of our uh, regular tournaments are so high that the step up to the pro level, it's very, very small. So nothing to fear, just go for it. Absolutely. And looking at the final table, I mean, which, which players are you targeting? Which players are you going to steer clear of? I mean, do you have any ideas like that at this point? I think I've got the big stack to my right. Um, so that's always a benefit, even though I might try and take a few of my blinds. But at least I can see what he's going to do before I have to act. Um, but he's the guy I'm after, really. You know, because I'm not here to come ninth. If I, you know, I, if I'm going to come anywhere now, I want to sort of finish in the top three. If I can. Uh, how did uh, play go for you yesterday? Any big hands? Um, quite a few big hands. I was up and down like a yo-yo. Uh, I was down to 2200 when the blinds were 816. It looked like I was going to be out, but I've doubled up a few times. I managed to get aces against ace queen. Uh, kings against queens and then right at the end of the day I had queens against a big ace and a gentleman pass and that was a huge pot and put me right up in the chip Paul, leader. Uh, and one of your sort of most outstanding results was coming forth in an EPT event. Um, uh, how did you find that experience? Oh uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that was uh, 2005, the um, London EPT and um, I finished fourth and it picked up 41,000. So yeah, I was fairly happy but uh, if I beat three more people it's 280,000. So a little bit disappointed but I'd have settled for it you know, prior to that. Back to uh, to APAT, uh, the atmosphere yesterday, a little bit different to a typical pro tournament? Um, yeah, I thought it was uh, very good. I mean, I think, um, like TK's sorted out the structure of it. I thought the structure was fantastic. I think it's great for the game. They put no juice on it. You know, so it's just like £300 flat. Fantastic what the sponsors have done, adding a package. Um, they've done a buffet. It, 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 it was a really, really good day. The structure was fantastic as well. So I thought it was really good and uh, very, very well organised. It's been a great event. This is, I played here last week in the 250 and uh, we, well, basically won it there's a top three um, and we decided to split the money but this event you know I've really enjoyed it I like two-day events um, you know so there's quite a big feeling about it um, and you know I'll I looked at the tournament and quite early on, you know, I wanted to play in it um, to, to hopefully, you know, progress, you know, my poker more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at Dean, you've just gone out in fourth, but for a great payday of three and a half thousand pounds, how did you find the final? Uh, yeah, it was very tough going. 
uh, didn't have any hands. One small raise got snapped off immediately. I had the chip leader to my right, it was constantly raising. Um, and I just basically laddered all the way. Um, finally got it in, short stacked after the deal. King Fiver Clubs, called by 8-8. Eight, eight, <laughs> Neil, fantastic performance. You've taken down the APAT Masters. Uh, tell us wh how you feel. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's really, really good. It's been great, great couple of days. Uh, it's fantastic to follow it up after Bristol. Brilliant. Superb. The, uh, the final table seemed really, really aggressive. I mean, w what did you make at the start? A start was was very very furious. Um, it was expected. There's so many short stacks out there, um, and it, any weakness it was pounced on straight away. Um, middle stages have got a little bit of play in it, but uh, yeah, very very aggressive. You had a big hand relatively early on. You had uh, a pair of tens, and you uh, you pushed in against um, Ian Bradley uh, with Ace Queen. Um, tell us how that one played out. Um, I was in the small blind. Um, he's raised. What, what was now ace queen um, from about third position he's had a flat caller behind him um, which at this stage I, I, it, it, it didn't appear to be that strong to me um, I've looked down at tens in the small blind being chip leader um, I was only really worried about Ian with the initial race and I thought the flat call behind may be enough to scare him to put down most things um, I was pretty confident we were racing I'd expect him to lay down ace jack ace queen um, so I've, I've shoved it, um, expecting him to fold. He's, he's called with the ace queen, and Jen Hines fold, uh, has folded. Um, he's made the good read. He, he realised what I was doing. He's willing to accept the race at this stage. Maybe with a bit more play, maybe he may have put it down. Um, sadly, I hit my ten on the river, which gave him a straight. So, having lost um, a considerable number of chips at that point, having been the chip leader for for the final table up to that point, I mean, how did you how did you play it from there? Uh, there wasn't really much much option for me. It was either I was either in, get it in or get rid. Um, it put me down to about six big blinds. Um, just thankfully, in the next round, I managed to nick two blinds, and it almost kind of put me back in the game. I could then sort of take my time, find a reasonable hand, and it just went from strength to strength from there. You found yourself with four left, um, basically a massive chip leader through aggressive play on the final table, um, and for the first time in an APAT event, uh, a deal was proposed. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, there's obviously quite a lot to play for. Uh, it's main thing for me when it got to that stage was the seat. Um, I really wanted the seat. Um, and I, I wanted the, the short stacks to, to start shoving because they were playing really, really tight. Um, and I didn't want them to sort of just, just get down to the stage where they found they had to do it. I wanted them to sort of plan a little bit um, and biting back. Um, so we tried to work out some sort of deal. Uh, took the money out of the equation. I got what I think was quite a good deal for me at the time. Um, played on for the seat and thankfully it worked out for the best. Fantastic performance. So with a, a, a Gala Poker Tour win, an APAT Masters win, I mean what's next for Neil Blashley? Who knows, I just, just hope I can uh, get something down in, Bris uh, in Bristol with the main event and now on the Groven Tour as well. If I can pick up something in Ivy Lays too, it will, will be fantastic. Just need okay. We'll be following you all the way Neil and uh, congratulations, a very worthy winner to this tournament. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Cheers.